Today I want to talk about language. So many people want to know what do I call you and how do I, how do I speak? And it's understandable. It can be a bit nerve wracking when you really want to do the right thing, but you don't know what to say. Now for a long time, we've had style guides that say, put the person first, a person with a disability, that's person first language. The other alternative, which is having a rise around the world amongst people with disabilities just is to say a disabled person. So what's that about? Well, the rise of using the word disabled person again is about reclaiming a word that was used against us and against our community. A lot like you will see in African American communities, the reclaiming of the word nigger, which had disadvantaged and disempowered. Also, along with reclaiming a word, realistically, while I say see a person not a disability, Unless you actually have a vision impairment. I'm a bit concerned if you don't notice this giant pink wheelchair here. What I would hope is you see the wheelchair, but you see all of me. You understand I'm a Paralympian. You understand I'm a journalist. I have a uni degree, I volunteer. I have family, I have friends, I have causes I'm passionate about. I'm part of the community, just like all of you. And we don't come along and say, a person with womanhood or a person with brown hair. So when we come to first person first language, that's where you say a person with a disability. The people who want to use this language, what do you just see them? So, you know, if I'm facing the camera like this, you wouldn't realize at all that I have a disability because from this angle, I don't have a visible, a visible disability. And some people's disability is never visible. And what, what the proponents of this group of language want is to be noticed for who they are as a person because they're not defined by their disability. So where do I fit in amongst all of this? I grew up really actually not even knowing there was a debate or a discussion about this. I was just like, hey, call me Marika. I've progressed understanding this debate now and that it's a real actual thing that we choose the language deliberately. So for many decades, I have identified as a person who has a disability. For a time during my university studies, I was a very fit Paralympian who was very strong. And I don't think I've been to the doctor in about 30 years other than a uh, Honestly, may probably TMI, but for a contraceptive pill prescription. So realistically, if you think disability involves a lot of medical situations and being unwell, that wasn't my experience. So I was flirting with the term differently abled. I've gotten older and I understand some people want to say that. To me, I've come around at the moment to feeling like I actually want to not be differently abled or anything fancy. Let's just say the word, let's say disability, because I am many things and I'm also a wheelchair user and nothing's driven that home to me more than the past two years where I have not had access to the wheelchair, not disabled by the language that got used and not disabled by having a spinal cord injury, completely being disabled by the lack of a system that could provide me with a wheelchair in a timely fashion. So I do own the word now. There's been a change in my own language. It's evolved over the years, along with whether I want to be photographed showing my disability, not showing my disability, whether I'll declare it in a job interview, on my resume, for heaven's sake, on an internet dating profile. So what is the takeaway for you about what language you want to use? I take your cue from the person. They're most likely going to mention it. It's a bit like preferred pronouns. You might also want to ask, as every person with a disability has a different view. That is the most beautiful thing about this rich dynamic community. There's not something that magically happens and all of our brains sink and we feel and say the same thing just because we happen to have disabilities. Our life experience brings us to have different opinions and I know that can be incredibly confusing when you just want the right answer and to get a book. 
and go, okay, what do I do? I call you, let's face it, I think the best thing to still call me is just Marika. So call me Marika. I happen to use a wheelchair. I am a disabled person or a person with a disability, but really the big takeaway is to understand that everyone with a disability is a unique individual, we're not a homogenized group who think, feel and understand the same. Like every culture, we're growing and evolving our language. Everyone's at a different place. So let's really celebrate the individuals and take our cue. Because this is nothing about us without us. You'll get guided on the language by the person you're hanging out with, going to have working with you or for you. And while words really matter, actions matter a whole lot more. So call me Marika. 